Hi, this is Paul from Pear Tree Education. Today's video is about the role of gaming in 21st century education. Any of you that have seen my other videos about student-centered learning and technology won't be surprised by my views on gaming in education. The most important thing I want for you to take away from this video is that games should be designed by the students. For this, I'm going to explain why and how. Firstly, why should the students be the ones making the games? Think about it this way. If students are playing games, they are consumers of entertainment. Yes, you can argue that they're actively playing the game, but they had no involvement in the game's development, so they're still consumers. Being a consumer is ultimately a passive role. I want children to be creators, not consumers. Game design by students fits in perfectly with project-based learning. Students get to demonstrate their understanding of a theme or topic by designing a game that applies their understanding. Teachers can then use those games to assess student learning. It's an amazing non-traditional method of assessment. It's something that students will be actively engaged in. It will be something that your students will remember, both in terms of the experience and the content knowledge accompanying it. Also, consider the range of skills students require to make a game. Firstly, there's teamwork. Game development is rarely a one-person effort. It's very challenging in terms of the range of skills required and the amount of work involved. By sharing the responsibilities through roles, game development is much easier and more achievable. Then there's creativity. Students will be working in 2D and 3D art, both on paper and using technology. Then there's performing arts. A lot of games have some kind of voiceovers or acting involved, and this is something that is an additional component of game development. Then there's research. How can you make a game without devoting time and effort into researching the topic in depth? As such, the students gain subject matter knowledge in depth and breadth and develop their research skills at the same time. There's also sound design. If you want to incorporate music in a meaningful way into your curriculum, what better way of doing this? Students can make music and sound effects that accompany their game. And then lastly, there's computer programming. And this is something I'm gonna come back to later in the video, uh, especially for those of you that are a bit uh, afraid of this concept. Secondly, education is based on context. The students in your classroom are not gonna be the same as mine. They'll vary in different ways, such as cultural background, socioeconomic status, i.e. their social class, the student's existing education, the teacher's teaching approach, whether you have separate subjects or a theme-based approach, i.e. where subjects are blended together. Then there's gender. Your students may be in a co-ed school or boys only or girls only. Then there's the classroom setting. Your classroom is not gonna be the same as my classroom. And the same thing applies to access to technology. We all have different technology, whether it be Apple products or PC products or Android based products, and that will determine how we can use technology in our classrooms. So it's really difficult to design a one size fits all commercial game that can fit all of these different needs and be sold to all teachers and classrooms in an equal way. So therefore, as an educator, it's difficult to find a game that you consider suitable for your classroom. Besides that, consider that the average game is designed by men for boys. They generally aren't designed with girls in mind at all, at least not in the non-cliche Barbie sense. If you want to get girls interested in gaming, you have to let them design the games. How can children develop games? Yes, I believe that students should learn about computer programming, also known as coding, and that should be from kindergarten level upwards. This is because learning about computer programming teaches math logic, problem solving, and even visual spatial awareness. This isn't a video dedicated to reviewing software options, but you can teach coding to kids through the following methods. Lightbot, Robomind, Scratch, and Raspberry Pi. There are many others on the market, but these are the first four I can think of. However, let's be honest, it would take many years for a child to develop the necessary skills to program a sophisticated game from scratch. As such, I'm also suggesting teachers use game development tools, of which there are many available. Going back to scratch, this is something that you can actually develop a whole game through, not just learn about computer programming. There's also RPG Maker if you're making a role play game. 
there's Kodu, Minecraft, which even has an educational version available for teachers. And then for younger kids, you can use Tocker Builders. More sophisticated games can be made using Unreal Engine, uh, which at the moment of this video is version 4, and there's also Yo-Yo Game Maker. Overall, I know that teachers will feel intimidated by the prospect of game design and computer programming taking place in their classrooms. Bear in mind that I'm not talking about teachers being game designers. Teachers are there to mentor their students through the challenges of game design. Those things such as collaboration, communication, research, perseverance, and so on. These are, these are skills that you use throughout your class, and it's not something unique to game design. So it's something I feel that all teachers are capable of mentoring their students with. And also bear in mind that computer programming at an elementary age is mostly focused around logic and problem solving, which all teachers should be capable of. That's about all for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please click the like button below. And if you'd like to see more upcoming videos about 21st century education, please click the subscribe button. Thanks again and see you all soon.